let's design the best late game raft for chapter 3. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. A lot of you lovely folks have been asking and waiting for an end slash late game build, and it is finally here. I present to you the SS Nesting Grounds, inspired by the New Orleans Steamboat. This one is a big project that requires a lot of resources, so be sure to check the description for a full materials list. Also, please note that this raft is not built nearly as much for efficiency as a lot of my other designs are. You wanted overkill, so we went overkill. That's not to say that there aren't plenty of features in this raft though. There's several automated farms, a pretty efficient biofuel setup, nice storage space, a trophy room, a kitchen, and rooms to accommodate at least four players, plus all of the normal survival and navigation gear that you're accustomed to. This build took a ridiculous amount of time to plan and design, so consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. But without further ado, let's design the perfect overkill raft for chapter 3. For this specific design, we're going to build the structure layer by layer because I think it will make more sense for anyone trying to replicate this, and we're starting with an 11 by 26 rectangle with rounded corners. On whatever side you decide to make your front, add a smaller 3 by 9 rectangle. Then bring the front triangle together so that there's one flat piece in the center. Of course, make sure you fortify all of the edges. In the middle row of your smaller 3x9 triangle, add a line of 7 collection nets with 6 going down each side. By this point in the game, you probably don't need that many nets, and these are more of a backup than anything else. Add a roof on the diagonal pieces of your raft, making sure to connect it all the way around the front and the back. Bring the bottom with two layers of half walls, making sure to leave room for doors and engines accordingly. Build a little entryway around the door on either side, and box in your engines with a wall on either side of that long gap. Place a wall on every square between the engine wall and your entryway to create your storage cubbies. And on one side of the front, add a little shelf on the wall. Place your advanced anchor in the middle between your two front doors. Leave three squares behind your anchor towards the center of your raft and place your stairs, then create a small cubby for your stairs using half walls and triangles with a door to close off the back side. Leave four squares behind your door and build a 3x3 fence area to start your animal farm. Make sure to leave a one square wide alley between your other 3x3 squares that go behind the original area and are offset by one square down the middle. You'll also need to make sure that the center railing of each square along the alley is made of rope fences so that the water pipes can fit through in the future. Then fill in the outline of the ship with your first floor using the floating triangle hack. On your first deck, leave 6 squares from the first full square and create a wall of alternating walls and windows with a door in the middle. Then place a diagonal window along the side with 2 normal walls and 10 windows going down the side of the boat. Then finish out the outside of this deck with a normal wall, a door, and then wrap all the way around, but be sure to have a door in the center of the back end of your raft. Bring this whole floor up by a layer of half walls. Next is the engine caps. Technically, you only need four engines to power this raft, but having at least six looks a lot more balanced aesthetically in my opinion, so that's what I'm showing here. You can always adjust the size of this to fit in whatever you want later, but anyways, it's basically just building a small hat for your engines. Make sure to build the end platforms using the triangle hack, and put in some little upside down triangles to separate your engines. Next, add a full railing around your first deck, then place expensive pillars every two squares. You'll need to stack a half pillar on top of the normal pillar to meet the height of the walls. Then connect these all the way around with horizontal half pillars. At the back of your engine cap, you're going to make another stairwell using the same technique you use downstairs, but just extend it up by a half wall. Make sure to do this on both sides. Back inside the outer walls, you'll want to add some pillars and a railing to your lower staircase. All of the interior walls are built by stacking half walls on top of each other in a general layout. From the front door, you'll need one diagonal wall, one normal wall, a door, two walls, one diagonal wall back out, and then one more wall to connect it to the outside wall. Do this on both sides. On the two walls above the staircase, place an upside down triangle to create an arch, and then connect the two triangles using roof pieces all the way around through the hallway. From the inside of the side door towards the back, leave one square, then one wall, a door, a diagonal wall, three normal walls, one normal wall with a window, a door, a normal wall, and then one wall going diagonally towards the back door. Again, do this on both sides. 
Then you'll do the same process of adding in an upside down triangle above the hallway and connecting it all with roof pieces. On every square of the rooms, add in a cheap half pillar both horizontally and vertically for a molding effect. Then fill in the bottoms of the squares and diagonal walls with detail planks. From the bottom deck stairs, leave three squares, then create a slanted cubby for your upper staircase. Add in your stairs and then fill in the back with roofing and add your pillars and detail planks in accordingly. Fill in this upper floor complete with an extra ring to reach all of the pillars on the outside and leave room for a 3x6 gap above the main stairs. Speaking of those main stairs, add in your pillars on either side complete with a railing. For the front, just duplicate what you did on the deck below with alternating windows in the wall with door in the middle and a window on the diagonal. Then just alternate regular walls and windows for 8 squares. From here, create some space for a door with a solid wall and then place 6 more windows. On the left side, when facing the back, you just need 4 normal walls, 1 diagonal wall, and 2 normal walls. The right side, you'll need 2 normal walls, 2 upside down triangles facing each other, and then complete the diagonal wall inside like the other side. Behind that opening, add a door on either side with upside down triangles to create a little arch. Again, behind this, create a little stair cubby with half walls of triangles, and then place your stairs going up. Back inside the kitchen area, leave one square, then create a one wide cabinet, and fill in your counter space, making sure to leave room for the oven design we'll cover later. From the side door, leave three squares towards the front, then stack two half walls with an upside down triangle to create a larger entryway on both sides. On the outside, leave three full squares, and then place seven half walls along the perimeter on each side, then finish the rest with normal railing. Again, place expensive pillars every two squares directly above the pillars below on your back and sides, and then connect it with cheap horizontal half pillars. Then fill in your roof, connecting the front to the pillars with a slanted pattern. Copy the seven half walls from below onto the upper deck, and two squares in from the center of the front, place three windows in a wall, and then one window on each diagonal, and one normal window. Then alternate normal walls and windows for a total of 5 spaces. Connect the two sides in the back with a wall and windows and a door in the center. Add in horizontal half pillars around the edge of this cabin. Behind the cabin, leave 4 spaces and then add a half stair going back towards a raised 3x3 platform. Add a door above the stairs and then ring the rest with windows. Complete the roof with corner and normal roof pieces with a little hat on top and then ring this again with horizontal half pillars. Equidistant between the control center and the back of the boat, create a large pillar out of normal walls that goes up three stories. On top of these towers, place a layer of thatch windows with pillars in the corners, then connect the two towers with horizontal half pillars. And that completes the structure of your steamboat, so it's time to move on to making it functional. On the bottom layer of your raft, add a back shelf against the slanted back end, and then fill it in with small crop plots for flowers. Place a fuel tank in either corner, then line the rest with beehives. On either side, add an advanced biofuel refiner, then destroy the third square in from the center of the back of your raft and place an electric purifier out of either side with a water tank in front of it. Then connect all of this with water pipes and run the pipes up the alley you left between the animal farms earlier. Fill in your 3x3 fence areas with grass and add a sprinkler against the alley. On the right side when facing the back, Lead a water pipe out through an upside down triangle or window and bring it up through the engine cap. Then place four engines in the long gaps you left earlier. Again, you don't actually need that many, but it looks nice. Run your fuel pipes alongside the back for the fuel tanks and you'll need to go over that water pipe from earlier. In your farming area, add in two more sprinklers from between the animal farm and the water tank and then fill it in with the advanced crop plots to supply your biofuel refiners. Add a paint mill on either side of your front animal farm, and then fill in your storage cubbies with 8 chests per cubby. Then add a large storage on either side of your doorway entry on both sides of the boat. Towards the front, add 6 melters on the side with the shelf, and 3 recyclers on the other side. From the front of the boat, destroy the third square in, and add an electric purifier going towards the front. For piping, place a pipe in every available space towards the front, which means you'll need some temporary scaffolding. Then connect these to two sprinklers on either side of the purifier hole. Next, add in 11 advanced medium crop plots in whatever pattern makes you happy. 
For the upper decks, add in a curtain on every window and make sure you finish the molding with the detail planks. On the first deck, add in three couches on either side of the main area with some small tables in between them. On either side of the side doors, add in a tall cabinet and then add in some carpet along the sides and between the stairs. You might want an occasional hallway decoration as well. Next is the bedrooms. I've already made a full video with unique bedroom designs and inspiration, so I'm not going to show you how I decorated each bedroom individually as they're pretty generic, and this part is up to you to be creative with. For the outside of the first deck, create a small terrace with pillars and horizontal pillars in whatever shape you want. Then add a sprinkler on the third square from the front with a pipe to connect it to the purifier downstairs. Ring this with eight advanced tree plots. On every pillar around the main cabin area, place an upside down small trophy board and connect the pillars with some hanging lights. For the second floor, place one medium trophy board on either side of the entryway to your trophy room, then one large trophy board between every window. Create a small lounge in the center of this room with a table, couches, and a fireplace and whatever else you like. To make the kitchen, add in a fridge in that little space next to your cabinet, which you can then fill with either chests or shelves depending on your preference, and then place your water tank facing outwards in that little gap we left earlier. Connect these pipes to the ones you let out from the underside of your bottom deck. In the space for the oven, place two chests with a window in front of them, then three small grills hanging from the walls. You can add one triangle slightly clipping into these grills, and if you add in some small decorations like a rug, a shelf, and a curtain, you can make a pretty convincing oven. On the other side of your kitchen, add in a cooking pot with a juicer in the corner, two electric grills, and then another cooking pot. You can also add in some small chests beneath the cooking pots for some extra storage. Above your grand staircase, make a chandelier with some string lights and a lantern, and then complete the outside with some more upside down small trophy boards on pillars with hanging lights in between them. On the top deck, add windmills in either corner of the back and a sail behind the control center. In the main cabin, place two antenna in the back corners, and then one more along the left wall. In the front, place your steering wheel, receiver, and engine controls. I decorated this with a small captain's quarters. For the finishing touches, add in some signs along the bottom of the half walls on the top deck, and then use some fancy coating to create large letters on the half wall below. Then finish up with whatever lighting and paint job you want. And that's how you build the perfect overkill raft for chapter 3. This build took an insane amount of effort to plan and record for, so I sincerely hope you enjoyed this one. I know that it's been highly requested, but I wanted to take my time and do it right, so I would certainly appreciate any feedback you guys have for me. Also, I'm always looking for suggestions, so if there are other types of wraps you'd like to see, please let me know down in the comments. Anyways, that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.